today on Karamo. Maybe I am taking a baby from their mom. Is their son's biological mom too involved? Do I wish things were different? Absolutely. They had documented their emotional journey. Month after month, you're not getting pregnant, and I would sob in the bathroom. And have gained millions of supporters. We did not know it was going to take off like it did. But they received hate for having a mixed race family. Why is this white person raising a black baby? We've gotten death threats before, too. Okay, so you may recognize my next guest from TikTok. Ashley and Stephen have documented their emotional journey of starting a family on TikTok and have gained millions of supporters. But where there's likes, there is also haters. And Ashley and Stephen are no strangers to receiving backlash. Let's find out what's going on. When Ashley and I got married, we always knew that we wanted to start a family. We were heartbroken. We struggled to get pregnant month after month. But we knew before I struggled to get pregnant that we wanted to adopt a child. We were over the moon when Michaela picked us to raise our son, Abriel. But when we started posting our family on TikTok, we received a lot of backlash. People always make comments about Abriel being a different race than Stephen and me. We've received hundreds of negative comments about our mixed race family. When we decided to adopt, we didn't care what race our baby was. We were ready to love our new baby as our own. We know how important it is for Abriel to understand where he came from. We went against the laws in Iowa to have an open adoption with Abriel's birth mom, Michaela. We are one big happy family. And it's time for the haters to stop. We announced on TikTok that we were ready to have a second baby. Right after, Michaela texted us saying, I'm your only baby mama. Now, we don't know what to do. Karamo, we really need your help. All right, everyone. Please help me welcome Ashley and Steven to the show. How are you doing? Hey, good, how are you? Good, good. Come on, give me a hug. Hi. Hey, how are you doing, man? How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm good. Take a seat. So I want to know, first of all, how did you two meet? <laughs> Not embarrassing okay, at all. Okay, so we should probably come up with a better story than this, yes. but we actually met on Tinder. Yeah? It's, yeah. He totally catfished me, though. So. Did he? You catfished? <laughs> you know, I had to do what I had to do. So. <laughs> I want to know, why did you always want to start a family? I just always wanted to be a mom. I have, like, a big family, a big fam. Like, I have a Lebanese family. It's a big family. We're always together. And I just, I couldn't wait to, like, grow up, get married, have a family, have kids. Yeah. And it was just, I don't know. And the same for you? It was a family always important? Yeah, it was. And also, like, we're kind of the last two. I'm, I, I was, or I'm 36 now. But um, we were kind of the last two in both of our families to have kids. And so everyone was kind of waiting. So. Got it. I know you found out originally that it was going to be hard for you to have a child. Can you talk about yeah. that? So we actually, well, I wanted to start trying for babies right away. And yes. he, like, wanted to wait a while. But I was like, you know, I was on birth control for maybe 10 years. So I was like, I should probably go off it for a while, you know, get my cycle regulated. But start kind of, like, trying right away. And, you know, month after month, you're not getting pregnant. And I would cry. Like, I would sob in the bathroom. Oh. And, you know, you have to wait a year before you can go see a doctor to talk about infertility. And when we could finally go... You know, I wasn't ovulating correctly without medication, and Steven's, like, sorry, sperm count was low, mm -hmm. um, and, like, low motility. So they're, like, you, the chances of you guys getting pregnant naturally is probably, like, slim to none. Like, yeah. it's probably not going to happen. And so we were really heartbroken, and this is, like, going on, you know, two years of trying. And so we're, like, let's let's pull yeah. the plug and when we first met when we talked about having kids we we said you know i used to want three kids and adopt one and she wanted to have four kids and adopt one and so um, so adoption was already in the plan. it was already yeah, in the yeah. picture yeah. we Always. just thought it would be later down the road not first but yeah. yeah so when you found out this information and you decided to adopt what did you do then well i was laying in bed crying <laughs> um because you know it was another month another letdown mm -hmm. and so he said, Ashley, why don't we look into adoption? We can save up money. We can, like, make a chart. And, you know, once we get the chart filled, like, we have enough to adopt. And I was like, okay, yeah. So then I'm, like, on Google. Like, how do I start the adoption process? <laughs> like, wait. I'm saying save the money and praying. Yeah. And then, <laughs> take like, our time. Like, two weeks later, we had, like, an agency meeting set up. And, yeah, I didn't wait. I was like, yeah. let's do this. If we're going to do it, let's do it. Well, we didn't want to do IVF or anything like that. Well, when so. the time is right for you, you know. So when yeah. did you meet Michaela, your son's 
birth mother. So we, okay, so we announced our adoption in like April of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, we had matched with like a close friend's family member. Okay. And, you know, we're like so excited. I was like all in. Everyone said, don't get your hopes up. You never know if it's going to go through. And I was like, no, this is it. And then maybe like a month later, the day before we were supposed to go with them to find out the gender of the baby, they called and said, or texted actually, and said, you know, I, I can't go through with this. Mm. And I felt like my heart was breaking. Like in that moment, she I was- lost it. That's yeah. Good. So when did yeah. you match with Michaela? Um, so it was probably like July of 2019. So just a few yeah. months later. So we matched in July. We met her like a week after our lawyer called. Um, and then she was, uh, yeah, she had Ava in November. So it was pretty quick. Wow. Not all adoptions are that quick. Ours was yeah. really quick. Yeah. So what allowed the adoption process to go so fast? You are basically waiting for a birth mother to choose you. And so, you know, sometimes it could take years for someone to, like, look at your profile and say, hey, I really like them, I want to meet them, or different reasons why you maybe connect with someone. So tell me about the day you met your son, Abriel. When she was in active labor, we were in the room next door. We could hear the baby cry when he came out, and we were, like, hugging, and we were so excited. And then we walk into the room. Everything that you don't believe, even though you know it's not true, like, child stealer and... Um, like maybe you shouldn't have babies and all those things and I just wanted to cry and I see her like having the hardest day of her whole life yeah. and I'm like maybe that is true like maybe I am taking a baby from from their mom. Did she want to give up the child in that moment? I remember Michaela crying and they said Michaela do you want to hold him because he had to go to the NICU but do you want to hold him first? Yeah. And she said, no, that's Ashley and Steven's baby. And I looked at her, I said, Michaela, it's not our baby. He is your baby. We want you to know, like, he is your baby, and we want you to have as much time with him to make this decision that you, like, that you need. And mm -hmm. so you hold him. So when did you finally hold your son? It was probably a couple hours until we could hold him. Mm -hmm. And I would just, like, stand there staring at him cry, and I was just, like, sobbing. Because I'm like, I am such a horrible person. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, she made the decision, and this is what she, she had voiced that, like, I really want this, I know this is what's best. I was like, oh my gosh. Why were you feeling someone... so much guilt in the moment? I think you just let hate comments get to you, even though we didn't have a platform at the time, we didn't post anything, but my niece had posted something that had went viral and gained the first set of hate comments that we'd ever seen. And I think you just let people get inside your head, even though you know your intentions are good and you're coming from, like, the best place possible. And so... It's interesting, like, how social media can affect the way that you okay. see yourself and yeah. see your actions. Yeah. Um, I want to know, why did you want an open adoption, though? We thought it was the healthiest thing yeah. for Abriel. OK. So especially yeah. knowing that there were other people involved. You're in Iowa, right? Yeah. yeah. That's against the law there. Yeah. So, so have an open adoption. There's no such thing as open adoption in Iowa. Exactly. It's just closed. But we like, were like, no, we want to keep in contact. Like, he is still your son. You will always be his mom. Like, we want you to see him as much as possible. Like, we want him to know his family, know where he came from. We wanted to know that he was given up out of love, not because he wasn't wanted. Yeah. So. All right, everyone. We'll be right back with more from this unique family. Coming up. Yeah. So why did you post your family online? Maybe we're putting ourselves at risk. We've gotten death threats before, too. So I'm it's, sure. it's pretty crazy. If we would have had a preference that we only want a white baby, okay, then, oh, it's racist. But if we said we only want a black baby, they'd say you're only doing that to prove you're not racist. And so no matter what, we can't win. I've never yeah. seen the birth mother be this involved. Do you think you're too involved? Kayla, we want you to see him as much as possible. Like, we want him to know his family, know where he came from. We wanted to know that he was given up out of love, not because he wasn't wanted. Yeah. So, so why did you post your family on TikTok? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> I'm sure you get that question all the time. Yeah, yeah. We, right? waited, so, we waited she, a long time. We yeah. did. So the, the, first, the viral post that we were talking about earlier was her, uh, we had a family member who posted um, on uh, Twitter. Yeah. As our adoption announcement that that took off and went viral, we're like, this is kind of crazy stuff, you know. And yeah. she had an Instagram account at the time. She was a fashion blogger, <laughs> and I would always sit there and watch TikTok. We had some videos saved up on our phone, and I, one day I said, hey, you should just just try it. And we just thought it'd be cute to post our family. We did not know it was gonna take off like it did. We had no intentions of that. When that tweet went um, like I don't know viral, I didn't have Twitter. 
I had like my Instagram, like he said, and people would come there and like say hateful comments. So I would like block people. So I was afraid to post anything about our adoption after that for a long time. Yeah. And we've, well, got, we we've gotten video. death threats before too. So it's, sure. it's pretty crazy. So we have some of those negative comments you received. I want to show them right now to my audience. Why is this white person raising a black baby? What is the fascination with white men adopting black babies? Are there no white babies that need adopted? Yeah. What were your response? Well, one thing I always thought that was interesting is if we would have had a preference that we only want a white baby, okay, then, oh, it's racist. But if we said we only want a black baby, they'd say you're only doing that to prove you're not racist. And so no matter what, we can't win. Honestly. So we had no preference. And, so uh, I, I know yeah. my producer told me you got a lot of comments like yeah. this. You kidnapped the baby. So yeah. I'll be honest, reading those comments was like gut-wrenching again, you know. You say like, okay, they don't know us, they don't know our story, they see like a 30 second video and then they just make assumptions. We had a lot of comments that were positive also that said, you know, you're so influential, you know, you're, you help us you're get through the day, you're inspiring, us. you know, and so a lot of people did give us a lot of love for it. So we said, you know, are we gonna let the negativity like stop us from posting or do, are yeah. we gonna get off the platform or are we gonna ignore it and roll with it? So we decided to just roll with it and yeah. make light of the comments yeah. and ignore them, so yeah. Now I don't read that. Good. Yeah, you, you <laughs> can't listen, you yeah. can't pay attention to comments. Yeah. It's the first I thing do I tell that. everyone, don't yeah. read them comments. So why do you need my help? Because it sounds so. like your family's good. <laughs> so we want another baby, right? Like. Abe's getting bigger. He's going to be such a great big brother. He may or may not want a sibling because he loves all the attention. <laughs> but we're like, we would love to bring a sibling. He loves to play with kids. But it's hard being adoptive parents. Like, how do you make the right decision on do we adopt again? And, you know, IVF is all, everything with infertility is expensive. But it's like, okay, so where do we want to, like, invest the money and make sure Avril's all set, make sure we're making our family happy, making sure we're making like Michaela happy and... So would Michaela be involved in the second child if you went that route? So we would love, and Michaela graciously offered to be our gestational carrier. Um, <laughs> do and, not adopt from anyone yeah. else. And, and then logically it made sense because it, Abe would be tied into this in a sense. Yeah. Like he, him and his sibling also came from her and so we think that it would just be great all the way around. Yeah. Okay, so there's some difficulties with this second child decision. Yes. Is there anybody in your family who's against you working with Michaela again? I wouldn't say like against working, my family loves Michaela. I think like my mom's concerned that will I like be regretful one day if I don't experience getting pregnant. And, and I said before we got married, Ashley, I had to hear over and over again about how she wanted to do her maternity pictures and how she wanted to uh, just feel what it's like to ha be carrying a baby and yeah. like she wanted those feelings and to get maternity clothes and all that stuff and so I I see both sides and so um, that's where I'm kind of sitting at so yeah. yeah well we have a bit of a video from Abriel finding out that you want a second <laughs> child I want to look at that before we go to commercial do you want a brother or sister no why why the shit and go do you want another sissy or brother to stay at your house with you? Yeah. Yeah, to play with you? In my room. In your room? Yeah. Listen, everyone, when we come back, we will meet Ashley's mom, Dixie, and Abriel's birth mom, Michaela, and find out why Dixie thinks Ashley should carry their next child. We'll be right back. Month after month, you're not getting pregnant, and I would cry, like I would sob in the bathroom, and he'd be like behind me, holding me, and like, Ashley, it's only three months. Well, then like another month came, and another month came. Okay, before the break, we met Ashley and Steven, who reached out for my advice on expanding their family and having a second baby. We heard about the hate they received online for having a mixed race family, but what about those close to home? Ashley's mother, Dixie, has strong opinions on their plans for the future. Take a look at this. I love my grandson, Abriel. He's the sweetest, funniest little boy, the most loved child. And I'm so grateful to Michaela for the gift she gave to our family. But I'm here because I don't want my daughter, Ashley, to give up on the dream that she has always had. I don't want Ashley to make a decision that she might regret by not carrying her own child. Everyone, please welcome Dixie to the show. Hi. How are you? Hi. 
Let me see. So, Dixie, I'm, I'm going to ask this question even though I know why, because as a parent, and I don't know my mother, but why are you so involved in this situation? I know people are thinking I'm getting involved <laughs> in something I shouldn't, but I was there when she would cry all the time. It took me nine years to get pregnant. I knew what she was going through. Yeah. And as a little girl, she always, always wanted to carry her own baby. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to watch her give up that dream. Yeah. But you knew adoption was always in their plans. They said no, that they always wanted. Honestly, her, them adopting Abe, it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. He is the sweetest little boy ever. <laughs> but this is now a second child, right? Yeah. Because you can carry the child. Like, would you be yes. able to, like... So we knew that I couldn't ovulate without medication. Right. But we never went as far as, like, trying IVF, like, seeing how many eggs I have. You know, I don't know if I'd have miscarriages. I don't know any of that. Because we're just like, you know, it's always been on our hearts to adopt. There's a fear, in a sense, to go that route and find out? I don't think there's really a fear in finding out. Mm -hmm. I think, like, in my head, I'm thinking of Abriel. He needs a sibling that's not carried by me. Why can't he? <laughs> I just feel like he will say, well, mom, do you love me differently because, you know, Mama Kayla carried me. So, mom, yeah. I want to ask you, do you think Michaela overstepped her boundaries when, oh, no. I, when she said, I, I want to have the second child? Never. I think that she really, truly loves these guys, and I think she wanted to do the best thing. Michaela seems super, super involved. Yeah. I've never seen a situation not where she's even in open adoption where someone is this involved? Not in an overstep your boundaries kind of way. And like when we FaceTime, you know, I said we talk like five times a day. Half of the time it's just us talking about random things. Not even like, hey, can I see Abriel? Like we're bonded in a way. She feels like family. So it doesn't feel like this is Abriel's mom. She's not trying to take my place. She's not trying to like parent him. Sometimes I'll be like, Michaela, Abriel like pooped. Can you change his diaper? She's like, no, that's you, girl. Like, you're his yeah. mom. Like, you go do that. D Dixie, so, Dixie, do you feel like Michaela's too involved? You know, this is the thing. I just feel like if I said, yeah, she's really involved, it, people are going to look at me like, well, you're just saying that because, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you feel I can it? see where they love her. She is wonderful. She is just an inspiration. I'm going to get to meet the woman who is in the middle of this family. Stick around to hear Abriel's birth mom's Michaela's side of the story. <laughs> Coming up, are you worried about when he gets older? I don't want him to be mad at me. Do you realize that if you carry another baby, you have to do this all over again? It's still going to be there, Michaela. You are the fire. Get off my stage. And as a little girl, she always, always wanted to carry her own baby. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to not, to watch her give up that dream. All right, everyone, before the break, we met Ashley and Steven, who want my advice on expanding their family. Ashley's mom, Dixie, is also here, and she thinks Ashley should consider carrying their next baby herself. But let's hear what Mom Michaela has to say about the situation. Everyone, welcome Michaela to the show. <laughs> Hi, Michaela. Hey. <laughs> Hi, love, how are you doing? Yeah. Good to meet you. you Sit too. on down. Well, this is a beautiful blended family. This looks like a little TV is, show. I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I just want to jump right in. Tell us about the day you gave birth to Avril. It was extremely hard. Um, I can remember calling Ashley and telling Ashley, hey, I'm going to get induced, you know, like all of that. And then going to the hospital, having him and thinking, after he was born, of course, I didn't want to even look at him. Mm. I'm not going to lie, because I was scared. So Ashley's like, no, you have to. And I said, OK. So I held him. They took him. And then I was upset, because my sister came in and said, you haven't, done, you haven't signed any paperwork. This is still your son. And I was mad, because the nurses and doctors let Ashley and Steven go up to the NICU before my family or myself. Mm. I only got to hold him for like two seconds, you know? Yeah. 
went up there. I finally got to see him. My mom came. Um, she was not happy. You know, she wasn't excited about my decision. Do you have any other children? I have three older children. Okay. So yes. you already had children that you're taking care of that were yes. your, and then, so Abriel, you, I know you said that you have the, made the decision that you want to share only with him yeah. why you decided to yep. put him up for adoption, Definitely. which I respect. Why did you choose Ashton and Steve? <laughs> I don't know either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank we you. We actually but, have <laughs> the same spirit animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm looking at, I call it a you pamphlet. You didn't say a spirit animal, girl. That's how you made that decision? <laughs> <laughs> Michaela and I do. It sounds okay, ridiculous. Yeah, but like, who puts that? Yeah. Who puts that? And like, they're like adopted. That was different. You know, yeah, I look yeah, at yes, all of these people and it's like, rep, like it's like a repetition. Like it's all the so, same So thing. you chose adoption for Abriel. How long before you had him did you make that decision? Um, as, almost as soon as I found out pregnant. that I was pregnant. So the fun, minute you found out you were pregnant, yep. you decided, okay. And did you tell everyone in your family at that moment as well? Um, or did you hold that information I for later? I held it in for a while. I actually was very, you couldn't even tell I was pregnant. Nobody on social media knew that I was pregnant until afterwards, and then I came out about the adoption. Yeah. You know, like... What did you explain to your children? Um... Because you were pregnant in the house with your three kids. Right. So, and that's another thing, too, is not only was I pregnant in my home, I was pregnant in an efficiency apartment with three kids. You know mm. what I mean? Like, that's not the reasoning why, but at that time period in my life... It yeah, you were in a moment. Right, exactly, as a single mom, you yeah. know? <laughs> like, it wasn't okay. Yeah. At all. I could tell there's a lot of pain around that moment in your life. And I get a lot of questions like, um, do I ever regret my decision? I don't regret my decision. Do I wish things were different? Absolutely. So I did, I, I have to say, before you even came out here, I did look at this and say, I've seen many of these open adoptions. You're very involved. I've never yeah. seen the birth mother be this involved. Do you think you're too involved? Sometimes. Okay. I do. <laughs> For the first six months, I didn't want, like, I honestly, I didn't, Want, I wanted little pictures here and there, but not, and I would text her and ask her for them. Mm -hmm. um, and why was that? Because you were trying to disconnect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, social media, I actually deleted it and blocked them off Facebook <laughs> at one point. Yeah. And then I would re add them, and then I'd, you know what I mean? So it was like, and they just understood. It's an emotional journey. When they do things, like they just went to Africa, <laughs> and even recently, I still do it, you know? But yeah. it's not as much as I used to. Um, but we went to you didn't Africa. agree with all the decisions when they went to Africa. No. Okay, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mama bear thing still comes into effect. I remember they went to Florida, I think. It was right after COVID. Like, everything just opened up. Like, with my older kids, I was very, like, you're not going anywhere. Yeah. You know? And they were, like, in Florida, and I'm like... <laughs> My brand new baby, not you know. I'm thinking yeah. my yeah, brand new baby. Like, come up. That's why you know, I, like, when so I hear that's that because I, I know those emotions. I know those emotions have to come up in you. Yeah. So that's why when I hear about how involved you are, mm -hmm. you know, it, I'm like, I know there is emotion that come up with you that your instinct is yeah. to charge and say no, this is right or wrong. But I don't. Are you worried about when he gets older? Sometimes I don't want him to be mad at me. I have a conversation already ready to go for him. You know. Yeah. I actually have a letter that I write every year on his birthday to tell him what he's missed at my house or like what accomplishes I have made, not only for him, my older kids. So yeah. Ashley and Steven, I really wanna know from you all, cause I asked that question about worrying about when he's older. Do you worry as well that maybe when he gets older, he might say, I wanna live with her. I mean like, because he's so involved in her life and even though it's an adoption, like he might say, I want to go be with my biological sisters and brothers. I want to go there. And especially since how you have opened the family. And I'm not trying to scare you. We talk about this all the time. So if he's mad at us, of course, I'm sure there's going to be times where he's like, well, I'm going to go stay with Mama Kayla. Or but that seems just a little bit, I, I don't want to say, yeah. like, I don't want to I just, that seems out the norm that you'd be yeah. comfortable with your, your child saying, I want to go live with my birth mother. When you hear that, what do you think? Am I the only oh, one no, that hears I that and that seems a little odd to me? Like, I know, I have brought that up yeah. to them, but the one thing I want to just ask you, okay? Mm -hmm, yeah. And you know I love you, right? Do you realize that if you carry another baby, you have to do this all over again? No, really, I understand that you can say, well, it's not my baby this time. I'm doing it for them. Right. But um, you're 
still, it's still going to be there, Michaela. Th that's a that's a real question because the thing is, I'm looking at you right now. You're still emotionally and mentally he is involved. Only two years old, though. Yeah, of too. course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why would you volunteer to do this a second time when you still have these emotional ties? Just hearing how Ashley felt, I guess, about like she didn't want Abe to feel left out and all of that, like whole situation. I was like, well, I would definitely willing, be willing to not have another baby for course, you yes, yes. But, and have it be my DNA, like my child. Like that is a whole nother feeling. This is coming from a birth mother. You know what I mean? Like you have yeah. to understand that. Do I love Abriel? Absolutely with my whole entire heart. When we're in the same room and when we're conversating at this point, it almost feels as if I'm an aunt in an aspect. And it sounds sad, but mentally I had to prepare myself for that. You know what I mean? Like put that in the back of my head. I had to, and I've said that. I said, I don't want to be called Mama Michaela. I want to be called Michaela or Auntie Michaela. You know what I mean? And Ashley was like, no, you're his mom. That's weird. That's confusing. Abe calls you Mama Michaela. Yeah. Mama Michaela. Mama Michaela. Michaela. Mama Michaela. <laughs> yep, Mama Michaela. Because that is his mom. Like that is his birth mom. You know what I mean? And you know, when, when she said, like, sometimes I feel like I'm overstepping. She'll, like, call me. Like, we talk a lot. And then she'll be like, I'm not calling you tomorrow. Like, we just talked a ton today. Like, I feel like I just bothered you all day. Like, yeah. I'm going to let you. All right, there's a lot going on here. More when we come back. Stay with us. Coming up, I think you're extending way too much of an invitation. You're, you're allowing your child to say, Mama Kayla, yeah. which developmentally, that's confusing for a child. What would your role then be with a second child? Are you now auntie or mama again? Do I ever regret my decision? I don't regret my decision. Do I wish things were different? Absolutely. Do you realize that if you carry another baby, you have to do this all over again? Why would you volunteer to do this a second time? So I actually don't think you're overstepping now. I think you're extending way too much of an invitation. You're, you're allowing your child to say, Mama Kayla, yeah. which developmentally, that's confusing for a child. Yeah, but I don't want to take, like, that is his mom. One day, regardless of if he calls her mom now, or he but waits and mom. then he doesn't you're understand what to call her. And he needs to develop that bond with you without, I actually, if there was something that I was going to suggest, I would actually prefer Auntie Kayla, so it'd be something else. Mama Kayla is a lot. Yeah. So then will it be weird for him later in life if he doesn't know her, he doesn't have a relationship, he de what do I call, like, what is he supposed to call her? Because that is his birth mom. But so that would be something as a, that would be something as an adult, he would be able to establish and figure out as he's emotionally developed. Right now, he's at a stage where emotionally developing, that's gonna be confusing. What would your role then be with a second child? Are you now auntie or mama again? We kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, I don't know, I just thought I would be TT, maybe. Yeah. I like TT. We're like, that's whatever what my the other, baby like does I that. I have nephews, but that's not so fair. That's not in. fair to the second baby. Uh, first True. baby I mean, gets to say Mama Kayla, and he calls her TT. No, but Ashley, cut, when I said that, when I asked, when I told Ashley that, what about just TT? She said, the baby will call you Mama Michaela too. Yeah. You can't define things, especially in 2022. No, you know I agree. I mean? Listen, <laughs> listen, we, listen, I grew up in a household where I, it was, I was into my 30s when I was like, oh, that really ain't my uncle? I was yeah, like, y'all really ain't, you know, like, I heard so many people that I was like, uncle this, uncle that, and I was yeah. like, you ain't related? Exactly. Um, so I get that. Right. I get that. But it was easier for me to detach those emotions because yeah. the fact now that I'm 30, and so there was like, okay, it's another thing if I would have been 30 and found out, like, hold on. You actually are my mom or my dad? I think there's a question there that I do think should be raised about titles, yeah. roles, and how that will play into his emotional development. Yeah. And especially if there's a second child, how the thing that you're trying to protect A from, how if you have a second child, that could actually make things worse in a sense. I need to know as well from you, like all these comments you see from folks yeah, talking about I... they stole the baby and, you know, <laughs> and. Listen, black folks, we understand. <laughs> We've seen what people say about white people adopting black babies. And I want to see your feelings on that. So listen, everyone, I can see how much love there is here. And I know that everyone here wants the best for Avery. But when we come back, we got more to discuss. You are the pop. You're up on stage.
before we went to the break, I asked you, we see all these comments that are being made. Yes. What is your thoughts upon them? <sighs> it is very overwhelming for me. I can imagine. Very overwhelming. Um, I'm starting to get used to it, I guess. I have people that attack me a lot for what making they the decision. You? How could you give your son up for adoption? Why? Is it because he's African American? Because I have my other children are also they're biracial. Mm. I'm biracial, so just the skin tone of my older children is a little lighter than Abriel. Oh, so they think you gave up your child because he's dark skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's sad. It's yeah. sad, and it's very sad that a, a lot of the hate comments come from African American women, who should be helping me, I guess, or not helping me, but help empowerment, you know, like coming together and working together and all of that other stuff, you know, like making a difference, like you are why still do you strong. Think they, why do you think they would come for you? Like, why, because why do you think? Because I kind of think I broke that stigma of like a, a birth mom. Like I'm not, you know, people think that I should just be living poorly and this, that, and the other, and, I, and I'm, I'm okay right now, you know, like, I'm okay, so they're like, I get those comments as well, like, you're okay financially, your mom, you know, of course they stalk, you know, so it's like, your mom has this, your dad has this, like, why did you do that? Like, they're confused. And I think a lot of people in my audience, are any of y'all have questions about what's happening here? I wanna know. I'm gonna come talk to y'all real quick. No, I'm nervous. <laughs> Don't be nervous, this is a safe place. I'm not gonna let anybody go crazy, but we can talk about it. Tell me what's your name. Hello, my name is Darryl. My question is to Ashley and Steve. Yeah. Have you guys talked about actually wanting to be pregnant? So, yeah, I mean, like, I feel the desire to be pregnant will always be something that's probably there. Not as much now, because I, I love Abriel. If I was never able to have another child, I'm content. Like, Abriel is the best gift in the entire world. Yeah. Um, but, you know, right now, I wouldn't be ready, honestly, right now to physically, like, be pregnant. We have so much going on in our lives, but who's not to say, you know, five years down the line, like my mom's saying, maybe I will, like, regret that, or maybe I will want to, and who knows? I'm here, yeah, I'm here to support Ashley. <laughs> um, so... Good, good job. Yeah. Dixie, how do you feel about that? Because you're hearing her say that, yes, maybe down the line she wants another. I'm just gonna put out there that I hope it happens one day. I hope it happens. But she has to make her decision, what she wants to do right now. And if she's not ready right now, then that's what she has to do. Okay. All right, anybody else have a comment over here? One second. All right, so what are your thoughts? Hi, Carla. How are you? Good. Good. I really like the fact that she's getting called mama. You do like that? I love that. Okay, Be and why do you like that? Because it's so nurturing, it's healing for her, and it's not a lie for the child. And I feel like she's the mom. She's mama. Like, I know people in my life, I call them mama because I love them and they're helping me grow, which you're all into. Yes. And I love it. So I, I just... Michaela, when she said it's helping you heal being called Mama Kayla, you start nodding your head. It does. Um, for instance, me and Abe were left alone. And he said, Mama Kayla, we the same color. <laughs> And I was like, yes, we are. And that helped me. It, I knew that I was there for a reason that day. So what's going on? Because you're getting emotional. I see that. What's happening? Um, so I'm adopted. Oh. And my um, adopted parents, they're Puerto Rican. So I think that calling her Mama Kayla is really good because I just recently found my biological mom and like my mom she's like call her mom and stuff like that so me and my sister because um my my mother she adopted both of us together and um it's kind of hard for us to call her mom because we're like we don't even know her so i feel like it's really good that she, you guys are starting at a young age because growing up he'll have that yeah. and it's good that's awesome yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, everyone, when we come back, my thoughts on this situation, so stay with us. Coming up, there is something in you that feels guilty quickly, and yeah. you make choices through that guilt. In regards to having a second child right now, my real opinion, <laughs> we've heard from Ashley, Stephen, Dixie, and Michaela, but before I tell y'all what I think, I want to make one thing very clear. There are over 100,000 foster children. 
that are eligible for and waiting to be adopted in this country right now. And whether y'all can agree on this next baby or not, your decision to adopt has made a difference. And so I want to make sure I say thank you to that because it's very important. Because I think it's, it's important to know, working in social services, I saw the children that needed right. homes yeah. and needed families. And so anyone who says I'm gonna open up my heart, you know, is applaud. And any mother who makes a decision to say, I wanna make sure that my child has a resource that maybe at that time I think, didn't think I could give, I applaud you as well. Seriously. So I've heard this story, and I really do believe that there is a lot of love in all of this. Um, but when we're talking about having that second child, yeah. I think before I can even get into that, I do, hearing my audience's stories, I do believe that there should be more conversations, I think, especially being prepared for as Abe turns three, four, five, to discuss really about some of these boundary issues. Yeah. Because we're hearing both sides of yes, like it's great for you to be called Mama Kayla. Mm -hmm. um, it's great that you have access. But there are other people who have experienced who have been adopted who do feel confused. Yeah. Who when they turn 12, 13, 14, 15, start to end up resenting you because they weren't in the home. They start ending up feeling as if there's other issues like maybe you're not my family. And so I would just encourage you to prepare yourself for those things. Yeah. I'd also prepare you to really just to turn off those comments. Oh, like yeah. people forget that on social media, <laughs> you can keep comments off because I don't think people should have access to your life in the sense of being able to comment. And I say that for one yeah. reason. Abe's about to be able to start reading. Right? Yeah. And he's gonna go to those comments. And even if he doesn't, friends are gonna go to those comments. Yeah. And so I think the sooner you can turn off those comments is the sooner that your family can live your life as open as you want to, yeah. but he doesn't have to be exposed to that and it gives you an opportunity to explain some of these boundaries. Yeah. Right. Because I do think there's a boundary issue that does need to get tweaked. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see that? Absolutely. That's yeah. good. There's a little bit. Yeah. Do you feel that? Because yeah. you're the one yeah. doing the most ever extension. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you feel that at all? I just want to make sure that I am like, I feel like as, I don't know, in my heart, I just need to make sure everyone's taken care of. Does that make sense? Not just me. I want to make sure Abe's taken care of, Michaela's taken care of. Like, everyone in the situation is feeling good. Yeah, not yeah. so much. <laughs> 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 you're like, you're like not you. Honey. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to make sure everyone's, like, happy and I don't know. To me, it's not just about me. It's not just about Abe. It's about all. I don't know. So you're right. I'm probably doing too much to make sure everyone is so happy and mm -hmm. like. That's part of that guilt again. Uh, and our number one priority. That's that guilt. <laughs> I, no, and I'm saying this yeah. for real, just because yeah. I can identify these emotions quickly. There is something in you that feels guilty quickly, and yeah. you make choices through that guilt. Yeah. I would tell you to evaluate your decision makings when there is signs of guilt there. Yeah. Because that overextension will one day as a mother wear you out as well. Yeah. Like seriously, you've had five kids. You know, when you start overextending yourself and doing too much, you will get tired and resentful quicker than you can imagine. Yeah. And so I don't want that to happen to you. Yeah. In regards to having a second child right now, my real opinion is you're not ready to carry your second child. Yeah. And I love you for being open and wanting to be there. I see nothing but love in your heart. And I see nothing but love in all of your heart. But I don't think the time, the emotions are raw. I think there's still boundaries that need to come through. We still need to figure out things. I love the things that you are doing, um, but it ain't time yet. And I think in your heart of hearts, you know it's not time yet. I don't know. You know in your heart of hearts. <laughs> it's not time yet. I'm it's ready. Not time yet. Um, and I would say, Mom, you know, keep giving the advice because I don't think you're so far off. And, and the reason I say that is because every time you said it, she nods her head. And she also said, I don't, I think that the fear of you not being able to get pregnant, and I yeah. think the fear of possibly, possibly thinking that you might have to go through something where you end up not being able to have your own child biologically, I think that is crippling to you, and I understand why. Yeah. And so I think that instead of going towards it, it's easier to avoid it and say, I already want to adopt, let me just do this. Yeah. But I do think there's something within you that does want your own biological child. Yeah. I could see it. Yeah. I mean, like I said it. So I think having more conversations, mom, with your daughter, maybe about those fears that she's having, <laughs> talking to her, instead of telling her the beauty of it. I just, know. Yeah, talk just... more about like, yeah, why are you scared of it? Like, if, 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 even if you don't conceive on the first or second or third or fourth try, like, I'm still here for you. You're still right. a great mom. 
I think maybe shifting the narrative and the conversation could help both of them to get closer to maybe making a different decision. And I think that you're also wonderful, amazing oh, human beings for adopting. Thank you. I'm just gonna let you know that. Thank you. Abe has a lot of love around him. He does. All right, listen, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us. Come back next time, friends, so we can keep talking and growing. You know I love you all. Yeah.